The story you're about to hear, narrated by both Garnell Murray and I, is based on true events. To enhance readability and protect the privacy of those involved, some details, including names, circumstances, and locations, have been adjusted or exaggerated. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy. Unresolved, a short story of closure, tragedy, and forgiveness. The cigarette trembled between my fingers as I brought it to my lips. The acrid taste did nothing to calm my nerves as I stared up at that old, familiar apartment building. God, it had been years since I had been back here. I never wanted to return to this place. The scene of so much happiness turned misery. My eyes traveled up six floors to the window I knew had belonged to her apartment. Did whoever lived there now ever wonder of the ghost that haunted those rooms? Did they have any idea of the tragedy that had played out within those walls? I flicked the half-smoked cigarette to the sidewalk and grounded under my heel, shoving my fist into the pockets of my jacket. I finally worked through the courage to push through the front door. The lobby looked exactly the same. Same scuffed tile floor, same flickering overhead light that no one had ever bothered to change. The wall of dented mailboxes stood like sentinel guardians, their mouths clamped shut as if holding secrets too painful to divulge. My feet felt heavier with each step as I trudged to the stairwell. The echoes of my footfalls on the concrete stairs were deafening. I paused outside the door to the sixth floor, squeezing my eyes shut. I could turn back, pretend I'd never come here, but like an invisible string pulled me forward, I grasped the handle and stepped into the hallway. There it was, halfway down on the left, apartment 6G. The 6 had lost its nail and now hung crooked. I remembered her promising to fix it a hundred times but never got around to it. I stood frozen, assaulted by memories I tried to lock away. The first time I brought her flowers. An impromptu bouquet of daisies and baby's breath I had picked from the market downstairs. She'd cried and thrown her arms around my neck, kissing me deeply. Our first fight had been over something so stupid, some perceived slight I committed but could no longer recall. She'd thrown her shoe across the room in rage, and the heel had left a dent in the drywall next to my head. The night I proposed had been the happiest day of my damn life. The ring cost me three paychecks, but it was worth it to see her eyes light up when I got down on one knee. We spent the whole night celebrating in each other's arms. But in the end, none of it mattered. The good times were just bait to reel me in. And once she had me hooked, the monster emerged. My hands trembled as I reached out to knock. What the hell was I doing here? Did I really think she'd still be living here, over a decade later? That she'd open the door, and we'd just pick up like old times. Like she hadn't ripped my heart out and left me in shreds. The sound of footsteps within stilled my hand. The door creaked open, and there she was. Older. Thinner. With a few more lines etched around her eyes. But still so painfully beautiful. It stole the breath from my lungs. Hey, Megan. I managed to choke out. It's been a long time. Those cool blue eyes swept over me. Something like disdain flickered across her face before shifting into a polite smile. Simon. She said softly. My god, I almost didn't recognize you. The words pierced my chest like an icy dagger. After everything we'd shared, everything I'd done for her, she had the audacity to pretend I was some distant acquaintance. What are you doing here? Her tone held an edge of suspicion now. She kept one hand on the door, ready to slam it shut. I opened my mouth, but no words came out. What was I doing here? I had no plan. No expectation that she'd even be here. Seeing her now... As beautiful as ever despite the passing years, it was like some magnetic force had drawn me back to the source of so much love and anguish. I was just in the neighborhood, I muttered lamely. Thought I'd see if you still lived her. Megan studied me, and for a moment I thought I saw a flicker of pity in her eyes. Or maybe it was disgust. Would you like to come in? The offer surprised me. I glanced past her into the apartment's interior. It looked much the same as I remembered. Framed prints on the wall rather than her own abstract paintings. A new sofa, sleek and modern, but the layout was unchanged. Down to the bay window overlooking the street. Sure, thanks. I followed Megan inside, each step a journey through memory lane. In that kitchen, we danced together while making pancakes on lazy Sunday mornings. 
on that balcony. We'd sat drinking wine late into the night, gazing out at the city lights. Megan perched onto the edge of the sofa and motioned for me to sit. I took the armchair, unable to relax as my eyes continued roaming. Can I get you anything? She asked. Coffee? Water? I shook my head, though my mouth had gone dry. Now that I was here, I had no idea what to say. Over a decade gone in silence. And now here we were face to face. <clears throat> Megan cleared her throat delicately. What brings you back to the city? I tore my gaze away from the memories around me to look at her. I moved back about six months ago. Got a job with an accounting firm. That's great. I'm happy for you. But her tone remained cool. Distant. We may as well have been strangers making small talk. The gulf of years yawned between us. How could I possibly begin to bridge it? Where did I even start? Listen, Megan. My hands twisted together in my lap. I know things ended badly with us. Really badly. But I just... I needed to see you again. To try and get some kind of closure. Megan's expression remained impassive. But tension radiated from her posture. <sighs> What's done is done, Simon. Dredging up the past won't do either of us any good. I leaned forward intently. You ruined my life, Megan. Does that even matter to you? Her lips compressed into a thin line. We were toxic together. Surely you can see that now. Toxic? My laugh held no humor. You tore me apart. After you left, I had nothing. No home, no job, no self-respect. Megan smoothed her hands over her knees. Yes, well, breaking up was clearly the best decision. Red hazed my vision. How could she sit there so calmly and act so blameless? As if she hadn't smashed my heart and my future with the same callous indifference. Do you even remember how it ended? I demanded. Or have you rewritten history in your head? Megan averted her gaze. That was a long time ago. Not for me, I bit out. I relived that night every damn day for years. Finding you in our bed with him. The things you said to me. That you never loved me. That I was pathetic for trusting you. That I disgusted you. Megan flinched at my words. For a moment, remorse flashed across her face. We were young and reckless, she said quietly. I handled things badly, I know. And I'm sorry for the pain I caused you. Her apology only stoked my anger. As if a mere sorry could heal the wound she'd inflicted so mercilessly. You ruined any chance I had at happiness. My voice shook with emotion. After you kicked me out, I lost everything. I was too depressed to work. I spent two years drowning myself in alcohol just to numb the pain. I surged to my feet and began to pace, too agitated to sit. Do you know what it was like being so in love with someone, only to realize they never even gave a damn about you? To have them betray you in the cruelest way? Megan sat silent, arms wrapped around herself. Her refusal to argue only inflamed me more. With a deep breath, I reached into my jacket and pulled out my phone. I queued up the news article that had prompted this visit and held it out to her. You should see this. Megan's eyes narrowed warily, but she took the phone and skimmed the article, her brow furrowing. The further she read, the more color drained from her face. By the time she reached the end, she was white as a sheet. With a trembling hand, she tried to return the phone. No, keep reading it, I told her gently. Take your time. As Megan delved into the article again, tears welled in her eyes. The man she cheated on me with all those years ago was now wanted for the brutal murder of her own sister, Maggie. Stabbed over 20 times in her home, the news said. No clear motive yet. Megan looked up at me, stricken. Maggie's dead? But why? How could he- She dissolved into quiet sobs. My anger evaporated instantly. Despite it all, I couldn't take satisfaction from her pain. I'm so sorry, I said softly. I should go, but if you need anything. I paused, taking back my phone. I'll be around. I finally managed. With tears stinging my own eyes, I walked to the door. I had come seeking closure, 
but some wounds can never fully heal. Still, as I stepped into the hallway, the tears that fell felt almost cathartic, like a bad storm finally passing. If she needed me, I would be there. Not for reconciliation, but for closure. It was time for us to both start healing and leave the ghosts of the past behind. True Stories on the Word with Garnell Murray podcast is where real-life tales transform into powerful connections. It's a segment dedicated to sharing personal, work, and mental health stories, fostering empathy, and breaking stigmas. Every story during this segment is brought to life through the captivating narration of Garnell Murray, adding depth and emotion to your experiences. Always know that you can share your stories free of judgment as they will be edited for anonymity and clarity, ensuring your privacy. Ready to have your voice heard? Send your story to info at vindistrict.com and be a part of this inspiring journey. Include WWGM in the subject line for a faster response.